Hey guys, my name is Jamie Gant. I'm a computer science teacher in Miami. And my students challenged me to do the Brackies Challenge, which is in 10 minutes, make a video game. Well, I actually teach virtual reality coding and my students challenged me to try to make Fruit Ninja in 10 minutes. So here's that video. So let's start the challenge. First thing I'm gonna do is go ahead. We're gonna make a empty object and call it my dojo. And then I'm gonna go ahead and let's make a plane. I'm going to need a couple things. Go ahead and download Garden Pack. Import that. Fruit Pack. Import this. Seven swords. Import and import all my swords. So what that did is if you look here, you see I have my Fruit Pack, my Japanese Garden, my scenes, my seven swords. Let's go ahead and create our scene. So I'm going to make a folder. I'm going to call it. You can see I downloaded couple pictures and drag these into my images folder. Now these are in my image folder. I can drag this wood floor directly on that. So let's name this plane floor so we know what that is. For right now, let's just drag some stuff out. So I'm going to drag this, drag in a basket, and I'll scale it down. Obviously, I want to move this this guy over here. Again, I'll let's add a couple of these. Drag this guy out, move it around. on this side for now. Let's put something in this corner. Rock bowl. And throw some rocks in here. We can throw some of these other guys. And there we go. So we want to make a table. So let's just drag this guy out. Just scale it. Let's go. Let's make it 40. X 40. 40 by 20. Later on, if we have time, we will add a bunch of other things. Let's grab all this stuff. Put it inside of our dojo. Now for our fruit. Go ahead. We're going to make it. Contain. We're going to make another object. Call it apple. Call it banana. Another object. Call it kiwi. Each one of these, I'm going to make a script. Call it fruit. And create that script. Apply that script to each one. Let's go ahead and open up that script. Going to make some fruit variables. Let's call it public game object, whole fruit. Let's go back, click on apple. We're going to go to our fruit pack. Go ahead and drag in your whole fruit apple. Click on next fruit, banana, drag it in. Click on kiwi, drag it in. Click on strawberry, drag it in. Now these are all in our fruit script. Double click on the apple, let's scale these up. Let's scale it two by two by two. We need to add a rigid body. That way it has gravity. Do it for all of the fruit that we're gonna be using. For the banana, again, I'm scaling it. I'm doubling the size, the X, the Y, the Z, and I'm adding in my rigid body. There's my kiwi, there's my kiwi slice, there's my strawberry, and there's my strawberry slice. Next up, go back in the Let's make a private game object, call it fruit throwing. Here's going to be our push fruit force variables. We're going to do a push force minimum vertical force be 50, the maximum vertical force be 200. We'll do the same thing for the horizontal force. Let's make a vertical and horizontal force. These will hold the random values that we choose between our min and max. Lastly, is to make throwing direction, which way to throw. So to set our force, we're going to go ahead and do vertical force equals to a random range between our minimum vertical force and our maximum vertical force. We're going to do the exact same thing for our horizontal force. This will just randomly pick between these two values. That way we can have a throwing direction. So let's go ahead down. We're going to do show whole fruit. So our fruit throwing, we're going to make a new whole fruit. We're going to say fruit throwing. Put the position where we're currently at. Now we're going to go ahead and do set throwing direction. Set throwing direction, we're going to make that function. What it's going to do is if the value is greater than 50%, we will throw it in a positive direction, or else we will throw it in a negative direction. Lastly, what we're going to do is go ahead and get the rigid body that we added to all our prefabs. We're going to add a force to that rigid body to push it. Pretty much we need to add a vector 3, which is the x, the y, the z position. For x, we're going to do our horizontal force times the throwing direction, y vertical force, and z, 0. Let's go back. So back here we can see now it has a minimum, maximum, random, horizontal, and vertical force. Let's go ahead and create our game object. I'm going to call it Play Game Controller. I'm going to make a new script, Play Game Controller, and let's go ahead and open up that script. In the script, we're going to actually throw the fruit. 
So we're going to make some fruit variables. First one's going to be a game fruit container. Next one we're going to need is a fruit array that holds all the type of fruits we have. And lastly, the fruit that we are throwing. So if we go back into Unity, we're going to drag, you can see our game controller, we're going to drag our fruit container into our script. Now we have access to it. To start, we're going to go ahead and get all of the fruits that are in the fruit container. So fruits equal to fruit container dot get components and children. And we're going to get all the fruits and that sets that. Now inside of update, what we're going to do is say fruit throwing is equal to a random fruit from our fruits array. So we're going to say random from zero to the length of the fruits. Go ahead and say fruit throwing. We're going to put it at the current position of the game controller. And then lastly, fruit throwing dot show whole fruit. So we come back in here. Let's go ahead and switch this out, rotate our camera, zoom in, move our camera up so we can see where the fruit will be shooting from, closer to our table. Here's our swords, but let's go ahead and scroll in. Let's press play. You can see our fruits are actually shooting. Here we go. Next step, we're going to go ahead and drag in a sword because we want to slice the fruit. Let's go ahead and move this up to a position where it can simply cut the fruit. Go ahead and rotate it down a little bit. And there we go. Let's go ahead and add a box collider to our sword and then let's scroll into our sword to get a better view. So now you can see when I press play it hits the sword. Let's move the camera in a little bit better so you can kind of see it. And let's try it again. And there you go. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and add that sword script. Let's go ahead and open that up. What we're going to add is sliced apple, sliced banana, sliced kiwi, and sliced strawberry. Go back in the Unity. And now you see our sword has these objects. We need to drag in these prefabs. So go back to our fruit pack. Go ahead and drag in these slice instances. Remember these have rigid bodies on them so they can fall and use gravity. And there we go. So let's go back into our script. What we're going to do is on collide collision enter. So here we're going to get the name of the fruit that we collide with. Anything that hits us is a collision. So I'm going to say fruit name I hit collision dot game object dot name. So we're going to need to check to see if we sliced the fruit before, but before we do that, we're going to go ahead and do a method called show sliced fruit. And this method is going to need to take two things, um, the sliced fruit that we want to show and also the whole fruit that we want to delete. So inside of here, first thing we're going to do is go ahead and instantiate the sliced fruit. So if we hit a strawberry, we want to hit show a sliced strawberry. So we're going to do this, instantiate sliced fruit. We're actually going to put it at the object that we collided with position and also the object we collided with rotation. So that is the whole fruit that we actually hit. Next thing we're going to want to do is go ahead and get rid of the whole fruit that we hit. So we're going to say destroy whole fruit to delete. And then up here what we're going to do is say if fruit name contains apple, we're going to call this function. We're going to pass slash apple and we're going to pass the collision object that we hit which is the apple. Go ahead and copy that down. We're just going to change these to banana, slice banana, kiwi, slice kiwi, and strawberry, slice strawberry. And there we go. Let's go ahead and test this. Press play. You can see it is slicing these objects. Let's go back in. What we want to do is we're going to add a score. I'm adding text mesh score text and a score equal to zero. In Unity, go ahead and make a 3D object. We're going to change it to score zero. We're going to scale it down, place it in position. We're going to change the name of it to score text. So click on our sword. I'm going to head drag the score text into our reference or our sword script. Back in script. Now we can update this. I'm going to say score plus plus anytime we hit a fruit and say score text is equal to score plus whatever the score is. Let's go back and test this. You can see it goes really fast. We have an issue. It's hitting more than once. So what we're going to do is say game object, we we'll call it sliced fruit is equal to that. We're going to name our sliced fruit to call it sliced. Well up here, before we actually call the method, we're going to say if the collision object's name is not sliced, which means it was sliced before, and we'll cut all this and place this inside of here. And let's go ahead and test this out now. And there we go. Every time it hits it, it only adds the score once.
There's Fruit Ninja and only 10 minutes for my VR class. <laughs> off the way let's go ahead and add this to oculus so we're going to download the oculus utilities go ahead and we're just going to import these assets that way we can export our fruit ninja to our oculus go so i had to open that up and double click on it and what it will do is import these into our unity project go ahead and press import i'm going to say no don't ask again because there are some issues with the current Oculus Utilities in the Unity Asset Store. Here you can see I'm going to drag in my OVR player. I'm going to click on down, click on down. These shows to the left, the center, and the right. This is what it looks like if you're looking through the Oculus Go controller. I'm going to move it up so I'm closer to my table. I'm just going to drag my sword to the right hand controller because the Oculus Go only has one controller. Go ahead and do my build settings. First, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch the platform to Android. Then I'll go ahead and click on my player settings. I'm going to go to XR settings, turn on virtual reality, and add in the Oculus support. Click on other settings. Then I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to change this to Gantech. I'm going to change this to Fruit Ninja. This is just the APK or the app name. I'm going to change the minimum APK to 25, which is on the Oculus Go. And then now I'm going to go back. Let's look. I don't see my Oculus Go. I plugged it in. Press refresh. There is my Oculus Go. Select that and select build. Last part, go ahead and name it. Call it Fruit Ninja. It will compile this and export it to my Oculus Go so I can play this custom Fruit Ninja on my Oculus Go headset.